examples. Um, okay, so Mark, we met uh, at an event in Las Vegas. I don't know if you remember. It was the M4 Accelerator or something. It'd be yeah. funny to talk about that event. I'm curious. A long how time ago. Felt. Yeah, that was an um, interesting event. Uh, I learned nothing other than from your talk. And honestly, I learned more just standing in the back of the room because that's where we met. And I don't know if you remember, my dad came up to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and he like pretty much dragged you over to me. Like, talk to my son, talk yeah, to my yeah. son. You were nice, of, nice enough to do that. And so at the time, I was about 16 years old, my first event. And you just started sharing like advice with me right there. And so that's the first time we met. Make sure, make sure you do that on your come up too, because yeah. that's the, that's the most important thing. And I always remember which, which guys I would go up to when I was young and they gave me the cold shoulder, right. Versus the yeah. guys who, and the funny thing is now, right. Like I'm friends with, or at a peer of a lot of those people. And so I remember I'm like this motherfucker right here gave me the cold shoulder and was too good for me. Yeah. And, uh, and now he's like begging me to partner with him or promote him or support him or whatever. Right. And it's like, you just, you know, you all always yeah. want to be nice. And you, you know, like what makes me happy is not even working with some of the like celebrity people I've worked with. And a lot yeah. of them have, have big egos. Um, it's, it's helping people like you, um, yeah. because I know what that's going to do for your life, for your future family and the ripple yeah. effect that you can have on other kids coming up in this industry and so that's what I like is like yeah. the people in the industry who are young and hungry, but like they just need the chance or they need somebody to give them that little motivation. So just make sure you do the same thing, dude. That's a great reminder. I really appreciate that. Cause I feel like it's easy, even just in the DMC, people ask questions. I'll be like, I'm too busy with this. So right. you think uh, you're, too cool, you you're successful. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm glad you didn't do that. And I appreciate that reminder because looking back now at the time, I thought like the courses I was in or like those programs act. And I thought that's what was building me towards being successful. But now at this point where, you know, I'm looking back and uh, I've been in this for eight years and the accomplishments I've had, um, I see what I'm doing. And a lot of what I've done is just from the blueprint you gave me. I mean, we were just talking about interviewing people like you were, you had the business rock star show, yeah. uh, which is on every Delta TV, uh, yeah, in the yeah. airplanes, right? Huge show interviewing experts. And you told me, like, dude, just start interviewing people. And I'm at the time, like, what the heck? I don't have any followers. But I started doing it. Right. And every single interview I've done with somebody mm -hmm. has turned into some sort of monetary gain or connection right. with a referral directly from them. And then publishing. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting at your house at an event. You're showing how you publish that manny dude who does real estate. And yeah. you had your stripe up. You're like, yeah, dude, I'm making a cut off of everyone's transactions and I didn't have yeah. to create the product. Right. I don't have to have the brand. I don't yeah. have to have the, the database, the following, the brand, the trust, you know, but I can make, so that's what I always thought too, right? It's like, yeah. all right, I have the, I have the skills to make the offer or to sell something, but it's so much harder to sell my thing or make my thing when I'm just getting started. I don't have the list, the distribution, the trust, the testimonies, all of the things. So I find somebody who does have the things, but for whatever reason, they don't have the team. They don't have the person with the skills and I'll go to them and I'll say, Hey, don't pay me anything. I'll do it on a performance basis, which should show you the confidence that I have in my own results. Cause I'm not going to feed myself tonight or pay my rent if I don't make shit happen for you. So I'm clearly confident in my ability to produce results or else I'm wasting my time and money. And I won't have any money because I'm only doing this. If we make money, you give me a piece of the money I bring you. And that is way, way better of a pitch when I, when somebody pitches me, right. Um, yeah. And then I'm like, dang, this person must be good because they believe that they can make more money with my brand based on what I'm doing than, than if they come in. It's like, damn, you must have confidence. And so that that pitch, that 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 framing is just so good because it's risk-free, essentially, right? Um, we could get into the, there's layers, yeah, but yeah, like we'll it, it's, it's, it's essentially risk-free because most people's initial risk on an offer is how much does it cost? That's yeah. the first question. How much is this going to cost me? This sounds really good. It must cost a lot. Actually, no, it sounds so good because I know we're going to make millions and I just want to take 25% of everything that comes in the door. Yeah, um, and so awesome. it's a really, it's, it's a great thing to do. And it, it works for anybody who's listening to this. It's like, you might be thinking, what's the next 10 K offer or 25 K offer, bro, just go find two people to publish <laughs> yeah. and you'll make, make you know, you'll It'll make, make you more than that. It'll yeah. Make you make, more. make millions of dollars, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I had some people I published and made $2.1 million in three days and a million dollars of it was mine, um, in three days. <laughs> And it was all, yeah. all, all because of their brand. It was the same thing I could have done for myself that like probably would have done $2.1 million in the fucking year. True. <laughs> you know what True. I mean? With some with affiliates and stuff. Um, and I did it in three days because this person's brand is one of the biggest brands in the whole world. And so it was like, 
that's the secret is like, if you think you got the chops, then go find influencers and thought leaders. Dude, there's so many people who have giant YouTube channels and TikToks and Instagrams, and they do it talking about stuff where they at least come off like they might be an expert or they interview people. There's a lot of different ways that people grow their content strategy of an audience on social, but you go find people that have podcasts, YouTube channels, TikToks, Instagrams, and they have big audiences and they're doing something educational in nature. That's the, and the, the intent behind why people follow them. They're, they're learning something from them or from a combination of people they're maybe interviewing and you go create a course for them. Like a lot of those people, the numbers they look at is the money they make from sponsors, the money they make from YouTube, um, paying them ad dollars, and they don't have a lead magnet. They look at their subscriber rate instead of their email rate. And the problem is, is the subscriber number doesn't matter nearly as much as an email database number. Um, and it's on the topic of exiting too, because everything I think through now is the lens of exiting. Yeah. Build it, scale it, automate it, sell it. Because people want to buy automated revenue machines. And if you can build something scale it up to a specific either revenue recurring or a specific annual EBITDA um, comp and it's yeah. mostly relatively automated that you could step away from, you have something sellable. And so why build anything if you're not going to follow that model where you're building monthly recurring revenue or an annual EBITDA goal of hitting a million in EBITDA, 2 million in EBITDA annually, and then automating it so you can truly step away and either go do something else and keep the machine going or sell it. Yeah. And, and usually you can sell the thing for some multiple of EBITDA typically, um, yep. which means you can get two or three or four years of future cash all sent to you in a single day. And then if you know how to deploy capital, you can collapse what would take most people 10 or 20 years to achieve owning and operating a company by selling it, taking the cash, rolling it into the next thing, whether it's a software company or whether it's um, an investment in something tech-based, which has exponential, yeah. you know, venture capital or Bitcoin or crypto projects. So, I mean, dude, that's my mindset now is like internet marketing yeah. is cool. Publishing's cool, <laughs> but it's, it's all a means to an end. And, um, yeah. and, and usually that's like financial freedom and time freedom, doing things you love, spending time with people you love. Um, yeah. but there's a different way to play the game, right? And so many people, I think get caught up in just how much money can they make, but I could also get on my soapbox and talk about how like money is trash. It's designed to go down in value. And what happens when governments print too much money, they create an inflationary storm that makes it so that there's this big ripple effect where like you hire employees, those employees can't pay their bills because things cost too much. So you have to either pay them more or fire them or they quit. Yeah. And, and then you get into this inflationary storm where it, it even lands on your customers your customers feel like they can barely survive. So then they can't afford as many things. And there's just this ripple effect. So it's like being in the business to make money means you're in the business to collect dollars that go down in value. And so you're stuck in this crazy world where like, if you look 24,000 brick and mortar stores in America are closing this year, 24,000, bro. All the dollar stores are closing because inflation, things can't cost a dollar anymore. Yeah. Even the $5 stores, that's like, remember it used to be called a dollar store. Now yeah. they have $5 stores. Bro, it's, <laughs> the same, <laughs> it's the same shit that was 99 cents, but inflation, it's now $5. And like, you see like fast food used to have a dollar menu. Bro, there ain't no dollar menu anymore. And so the problem is, is like in business, when the government starts to hit the printer too fast, it really has this crazy ripple effect I can get into. Um, but being yeah. in business is really difficult. And the only way to really survive is to become a monopoly. And it's impossible yeah. for us to do that. I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's very difficult for us to do that. So our best bet is to be sold to the monopoly. Get just enough where you're nipping at their ankle like a fucking flea or a little cat. And you're nipping at their ankle and the big company goes, I'm going to buy you. Um, and then you get the cash and then you convert the cash into the next play because you don't want cash when the government's deflating it at anywhere between 10 and 20% a year. That means your business has to grow 10 or 20% a year just to stay afloat. You're not actually making any more money. You think you are because your dollars are yeah. going up, but the cost of a house costs more. The cost of a car costs more. The cost of True. groceries costs more. And so you're like, I made 20%. Last year, I made 100 grand. This year, I made 120. Yeah, bro. But that house you're saving for went up uh, $400,000. So, yeah. and then next year, it might go up. And even if so, you get this, it's like, the problem when I talk yeah. to most people and why I, I like to make this podcast probably different yeah, is like sure. most people talk about making money, marketing, yeah. tactics, get more money. But the problem is, is like what you're getting is a dollar 
that's going down 10 to 20% a year in purchasing power. So you have to make at least 10 or 20% more than the previous year just to break even. And that's on a net net basis. That's not a top line revenue basis. So to grow a business net net 10 to 20% a year is much harder. Because if you ever, if you ever get the privilege to grow a company up to 10 or $20 million a year, to grow that fast, you're usually thinner profit. So you're usually investing the profit that would be there back into the growth of the company. So your profit margins are thinner because you're reinvesting it all back into the company, which means you don't have much profit because you're spending it all on hiring, growing, it's expanding, yeah, more yeah. marketing, more advertising, bigger buildings, more office, more people, more employees. Maybe you have other variable or fixed costs in the company that expand as the company grows. And so again, well, I'm not talking about 10 or 20% revenue. I'm talking about 10 or 20% profit. And so again, there's layers to this onion we can get into depending on yeah, where you want to yeah. where you want to take this. But yeah. I'm I'm in that world now. And what's crazy is since I actually shifted my mindset to that, yeah. um, I've been, I've been able to generate. I can tell I can talk numbers if you want me to, but I've yeah, been able yeah. to I've been able to make more money about like twelve million dollars in the last year, um, barely doing like barely yeah. working. Like I've been yeah, like really half, sem I've been like semi retired, um, and I made over twelve million dollars. By the way, that's liquid cash. Yeah. That's that's just sitting there. Um, it's because it's Bitcoin went up. I take all my cash and I put it in a Bitcoin and my Bitcoin went up over $12 million in the last year. Um, yeah. And so it's liquid. I, I just sitting there. And if I did sell it, which would be stupid, I would only owe long-term capital gains where the money you make in your business, you owe 1041. It flows through yeah. to you probably as a, you know, LLC or S corp or however you file. Um, yeah. And then you owe 40 to 53% on your income where if I sold some of my Bitcoin, which I made over 12 million in the last year, yeah. I, I would only owe uh, capital gains, which wouldn't long-term capital gains, which wouldn't be as much. And I yeah. wouldn't sell it. I can borrow against it and I can take a loan against my Bitcoin tax-free. I could go out and get up to a 50% LTV loan to value. Um, so I could go and get $6 million in cash tax-free borrowed against my Bitcoin. And then I could go take the $6 million and buy real estate or whatever the hell I want. I could use it to live off of. And so that's the game is yeah. use your business like, uh, I was going to say a whore, um, but that might be uh, maybe come off. Yeah, wrong. Man, uh, <laughs> just the point is use your business for what its job is, which is to yeah. serve people and impact people. But just know that you can't serve and impact people if yeah, the government good. prints too much money and those people can't afford your product and you can't afford to pay your employees. So how do you grow when those people can't afford to pay for it and you can't afford to pay your employees? And so then you either have to lower your Sure. Your cost. So again, I can get into it, bro. But yeah, like, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm most, curious. So like, at this is the game that most people aren't playing. Like, no. I'll be a, I'll be a billionaire probably in 20 years. But like, I'll be a multi centimillionaire yeah. probably in five to 10 years. And whether or not I'm operating any companies will be irrelevant. I have three companies right now, but like, yeah. that's not relevant. Like, I'm doing that so that I'm, yeah. I have something to do and be productive <laughs> and serve society. Well, um, at what point though? Because you know you're so right all of us in this internet marketing game, a lot of people listening to this, we're so, you get so ingrained with just like 10 K month. I'll be fine. Okay. 30, yeah, yeah. 50, 100, right. It's like these, no. these we're chasing these it's never enough benchmarks. It's, it's like never enough set for us. And so yeah, yeah. I'm curious about what stage should one start shifting to this mindset you now have, because I've been wondering about that. It's like, okay, sure. I've hit those benchmarks now, but again, I'm still having to work for money each month. I'm still having to manage stuff. I don't have like, the passive income these people promised me when I was that 14 year old kid. Uh, the goal, the, so when do you shift? Yeah. Like at what point should you be making a certain amount of money from your business? Where's the measurement where it's like, okay, now I should put time and energy into learning what you're talking about now. It's a great question. And it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. Cause there's just too many variables to go into. Are you married and have children? That's a totally different ball game, bro. Like I'm married yeah. and have, I'm married and have a child. It's a yeah. totally different ball game. Some of my buddies are single and they're making great money, you know, like net after taxes, like have over a million dollars in cash every year. Um, yeah. But the problem is it's going down at a hundred to 200 grand a year. So even if you're just making a million dollars every year, that million dollars is only worth 850 the next year. And then it's only worth, you know, 625,000 the next year. Now it still looks like a million, but when you try to go buy the house, like I bought my house for 1.25 million and now my house is 2.5 million. I've only lived here for seven years, bro. So in seven years, my house doubled. And my friend, one of my buddies, um, he was like 
really wanted to buy a house in my neighborhood because it's brand new. It's super nice. It just keeps building. It's like the new Irvine. If you know Orange County, California, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yep. like Irvine was dirt. And now everything in Irvine, like the shittiest yeah. thing's a million dollars. Um, yeah. And so it's like my neighborhood, like my house is really nice, 1.25 million. But then COVID happened. And then, you know, they printed $7 trillion, $8 trillion, $9 trillion, and everything went up. And so now my house is doubled in seven years. I remember it took my parents 20 years for their house to double. 20, 20 years for your house to double. Um, my house doubled in seven. And that's what I'm saying, dude, is how my house will double again in five years. So that's what I'm saying when your cost of capital or when you're the hurdle rate, the amount of money that you need to make is, is disproportionate. Like never before in our lifetime, right? Like my grandma would go to the grocery store and it would be, 80 years ago, she'd go to the grocery store and she'd fill her whole cart up for 20 bucks. And I just went to the grocery store today with my wife and daughter. Um, and it was like $650. Um, and it's just three of us. One of us was a toddler. So it's like, and, and I have meal prep, like I eat meal prep. So like, what the hell did we buy? That was $650. I don't know. My wife bought it all, but like <laughs> that's $20 for my grandma to $650. By the way, she's still alive in her lifetime. It took her whole life to have a grocery cart go from 20 to 650. In our lifetime, bro, we're going to see what took 80 years of them printing. We're going to see them do that in the next 10. And so it's not going to be our whole lifetime like it was them. But now they're like, I'm old and dead anyways. Who cares? But like for us, I'm like, dude, in 10 yeah. years, if my house doubles again, my house went from $1.2 million to $5 million in the time frame that like someone like you is finally going to get married and have kids and want to buy a nice house in my neighborhood that I bought for $1.25. It's going to cost you five. Bro, my house is the fucking same. It didn't, yeah. there's nothing that went $4 million, $4 million. I didn't reno it. I didn't do anything to it. Like, why did it go up $4 million? Oh, it didn't. The dollar yeah. does what it's designed to do, go down in value. So the reason I share all this is, your life stage is going to depend on my answer. But yeah. the way that you want to look at this is in the very beginning, like newbie beginner stage where I once was and you were when I met you, is yeah. you want to you want to you want to get as much education as you can. Luckily, most of it's all for free. So shut up about I don't have the money to buy the courses. It's almost all for free. Yeah. Guys like guys like me and Josh and all the other amazing people that I know you interview, uh, we give away most of our best stuff for free. We really do. We're not holding it back. The difference is, is like, I can come on here and be scatterbrained, but like when I have a program, it's very yeah, organized and it's thoughtful and it's methodical. Yeah, and it's A, yeah. it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Where on the podcast, yeah. I can just be like, da, 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 and I can give you like some golden nuggets. Um, and then books are relatively cheap and free. You can do audible. I like to listen to my books at one and a half times the speed because I can listen faster than I can read. So learn a ton. And then ideally, you just want to make sure that you get into an industry where I would say that there's really two big things. One is the earning potential is unlimited. And the second is that you're solving a really big trendy problem. Mm -hmm. So for me, you go back over 10 years ago, it was internet marketing and learning how to do Facebook ads, get an audience, build an audience, monetize that audience, do funnels, do paid advertising, all that yeah. stuff. Like making money on the internet, especially pre-COVID was like, People, people would always say, what do you mean you work from home and have a, a, a multi-million dollar business from your house and you, you do this on the internet? What do you, that was like pre-COVID was like, what do you mean you don't have a, a brick and mortar office and a bunch of employees yeah. and, you, and you sell digital stuff? What, what does that mean? Um, and then COVID happened and I was like, ha ha, yeah. now, now you have to have a digital business too. <laughs> now you get it. Now you're freaking out. And and my business doubled and then doubled and then doubled during COVID. And then I sold it at just perfect timing. I sold it and then took all the money and put it on Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin doubled and then doubled. And it's like, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. You have to you have to get in something where yeah. you have the potential to solve a big problem that's trending. So right now it's it's AI. Uh yeah. a AI is the thing. The problem is, is it's so noisy and same with our industry, making money on the internet now is so noisy. And we got Boy, fucking, bro. you got fucking Dean and Tony doing their launch right now. And there's, you know, 700,000 yeah, people homeboy, registered for that. Dude. They got 700,000 people registered for that. And they're all learning, you know, uh, uh different stuff from those guys. It's like, yeah. I'm not going to say what's right or what's wrong or what they're teaching. And like, if they're not, if they don't even actually do what I they're will. teaching, right. <laughs> I know. And I love those guys. Right. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm in Tony and Dean's uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollar mastermind, yeah, yeah, like quarter million dollar mastermind. Um, yeah. but dude, yeah, it's like get into something, get massive education, surround yourself with the people who are at all the levels. Hang out with the beginners, hang out with the intermediaries, and hang out with the top G's, and yeah. um, and learn it all. And you just have to be in a sector though where there's unlimited potential. When I find these people who are doing fucking like crazy stuff, janitorial work, which is not that's a metaphor for like you're doing something that's literally shit. Like like there is nobody who's like. 
outside of Tony Robbins book on money, the master of the game where the janitor became a millionaire because he invested in the S and P 500 and, and reinvested it for 75 years. You don't do a shitty job that doesn't have the potential. So like I knew in internet marketing, there was guys making hundred million dollars a year. And, yep. um, and I knew that there was guys making a million dollars a month passively in their pajamas on a laptop and, you know, Fiji. And I was yeah. like, great. So I can have a legitimate company or I can sit on the beach with a laptop and there's all these different ways to do it. There's the corporate way. There's the laptop lifestyle way. There's all this stuff. And that was like a thing for a while, laptop lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so what I knew was I could make money from anywhere. It was a hundred percent relying on my own ability. Like nobody could stop me. That was the best part. There wasn't like a boss holding me down or a jealous sure. manager holding me down or like, you know, whatever. There was just no one that could stop me if I had access to the internet, access to the education, and I took massive determined action, my earning potential would be unlimited. And that's why I think one of the first things everybody needs to do is you need to get into sales and marketing. I don't, I don't care. You're just, it's very hard to make a lot of unlimited money if you don't get into sales and marketing because sales, you have to talk to people and communicate and sell the vision, sell the product, sell the reason someone should give you their money and sell the reason why somebody should partner with you on performance. And that was a lot of stuff I did early on was I would convince people instead of me paying you five grand a month for your services, I'd convince you to give, I'd give you 20% of the profit and we could grow this thing to the sky. And I would convince people to first tell me how big could this get? If I paid you five grand a month, how big could but you and me together, Josh, we could take this thing all the way. And then you'd be like, bro, this is a million dollar a month business. And we're only doing a hundred grand a month. And I'd be like, so there's a $900,000 difference. Why would you want me to give you five grand? Wouldn't you want 20% of that upside? And you'd be like, shit. <laughs> and then I, and, and now I'd be like, now you sound pretty stupid being like, no, I don't want 20% of the upside that I just told you is 900 grand a month. I, I, I want you to give me five grand a month. No, you'd sound like a hypocrite. So I got you to tell me how big you and I could do this if I paid you five grand. And then I said, well, wouldn't you rather get 20%? And you'd be like, yeah. And I was like, great. So then wave my five grand. Cause I don't have it or I don't want to give it to you um, either way. <laughs> and and then I'd get great talented people to come on board and help me. And so this is part of it, bro. It's recruiting. It's selling the vision. And so yeah. you have to get good at selling and communication. They're the same, one of the same. And then marketing, because you can be great at selling, but if you have no one to talk to, because you can do old school, pick up the phone, whatever, right? But like marketing right. generates leads. And I, I got really good at selling. And then I realized, shit, I only make a lot of money if I'm out there hustling, dancing on stage, right? I got to be on the phone. I got to be talking to you. I got to be in person. I got to be like, oh no, I got a sore throat. Made no money that day. Um, no. I'm sick, made no money that week. Um, and so I was like, and I did, I almost died in 2018 from sepsis. And I was like, oh my God, I luckily I had automated my business by then, but I was like, for three months, I wouldn't have made anything if I didn't get good at marketing, which I did. Cause I realized early enough, marketing is how you can automate the selling. Marketing is how you can generate the leads and take people through recordings of me on camera on a webinar or a pre-recorded presentation or a video sales letter or just videos on social media, a podcast. I can have a digital version of me live on the internet forever and build my brand, build rapport, build trust, build my story and build my network all without me actually having to be there after it's recorded and pu published online. Yeah. So I started to, I started to realize all these things. So what I would tell people to do is you got to find that industry and that thing. I think it's AI. I think it's crypto. I still think it's different ways to make money on the internet, yeah. internet, internet marketing, course creation, becoming yeah. your own personal brand, teacher, educator, entertainer. There's still a lot of money there. And I think we're still early. The problem yeah. is AI, AI is coming in and disrupting it. I know, I know some kids who are 16, 17, 18, they're making half a million dollars a month on Snapchat and TikTok, And, all their channels are AI and it's a channel on AI that's purely based on the news. It's a channel based on AI, purely based on teaching people fitness. It's a channel based on AI, purely based on all these different sectors that are super trendy, right? Uh, women, pregnancy, you, you search like crazy during that stage of your life. And, yeah. and so they have, they have all these different verticals, right? And it's like the news is not just the news. It's like hardcore liberal or Republican or conservative yeah. or, you know, Alex Jones, end of the world. It's like specific. So then their audience becomes diehard and then they monetize it in a variety of ways. They get to add dollars from the platform and then they can do sponsorship shout outs and then they can yeah. do their own, um, you know, product drops or white label or licensing drops. So these are fucking 16, 17, 18 year old kids, bro. I wasn't making that kind of money when that, when that was, um, when I was that age. Um, yeah. so hopefully those guys, you know, keep, keep the momentum and they don't, they don't, you know, end up doing drugs and in prison and lose it all. Um, but like, dude, there's no reason anybody can't be making the amount of money they desire, yeah. whatever that, whatever that is for you and doing it on your terms. You don't have to hustle and grind and kill yourself for 10 years. You can do it on, you can do it on your own terms. Again, yeah. 
you do have to find a thing though. Like if I asked you, is the thing you're even doing, it doesn't have the potential to make the money you want for the lifestyle that you want. And if you say, I don't know, bam, wrong fucking answer. You haven't even thought that the thing you're doing can get you the lifestyle that you want based on the revenue that that thing can provide. And so for me, I was like, can I make money from my home in my pajamas when I want and get up to a million dollars a month? And the answer was yes. And then I said to find who was doing it. And then I just had to go out and learn everything I possibly could. And then not just from one person, but from multiple people. And so find the industry that has the unlimited upside, that's trendy, all the money, all the attention, all the upside, all the best talent goes to that thing, right? Like all the best talent is at NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple. They're all at the big fucking companies because they want the golden handcuffs. They want the stock package. They want the seven figure um, salary. I'm not saying to go get a job if you want to be an entrepreneur, but you got to find that thing for you. And then ideally, if you want, you want to think, how can what I'm building in the first iteration, whatever it becomes, how can I sell it if possible? Now, the, the first thing you do may not be the thing you sell. So that's where it's like, there's a lot of variables. I didn't know I was going to sell my thing, but ironically, the thing I did do for 10 years, although I had many ups and downs and failures, it actually still ended up being the thing I sold, but okay. nobody would have bought the thing, um, even six years ago, pre-COVID, because COVID forced me to go what I said earlier, 100% digital, 100% automated, 100% scalable. And anybody could come in and say, holy shit, you're doing $1.6 million in net EBITDA, completely automated with one employee, fuck. And so I was able to exit for $5 million and I took the $5 million and I put it all on Bitcoin. Um, was that and your education company? That, uh, or that was what? the, that was short in the gap. Um, okay. The yeah. education company that I had for 10 years. Um, awesome. So we taught people, taught people how to build their personal brand, build an audience yeah. and attention online. Um, but yeah, dude. And then as you get to a certain level where you're generating, so let's just, th this is what the number also changes as well. Live way below your means, right? Mm -hmm. Cause your, the your question you asked me is that I could do a week long presentation yeah, on it. Um, especially because there's layers and there's levels. And so if I was talking to you, I can contextualize it around your situation. But what you want to do is you want to live way below your means. You want to live like a poor person. And again, that's relative, right? So like, um, sure. I still, I still, it sounds funny if I say it, it sounds like a dick if I say it, but I was, I try to live relatively low. My wife spends a lot of money. Um, she like, I say, I'm really good at making it. She's really good at spending it. Uh, and I, I try to, I try to invest as much as I can. So she can't spend it. I'm like, sorry, babe. You know, I just, I just put another, I, I, lo I lock that up in Bitcoin now, you know, um, but then I'll just wire a hundred grand and be like, there you go. Have some fun. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, there's levels, but I, I still live way below my means, right? Like sometimes I look and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, mm, no, I, that's, I look yeah. at everything, everything I run through is through Bitcoin, right? I'm like, oh, I could go buy that or I could buy that. And I'm like, well, oh, but that's six Bitcoin or that's eight Bitcoin or that's, blah, 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 blah. you know, so I run everything through that lens because I'm trying to just save. And then I know, bro, because here's the thing. If you knew every four years, your net worth was going to go up 10 X, how much of your money would you want to keep putting in that thing? And for me, it's Bitcoin and I'm not giving financial advice. You definitely should buy Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> as an as an investment vehicle, but live yeah. way below your means. That's the big one. So once you get to a point where you're living below your means and yep. you start start stockpiling up cash, that's the goal. You just want to live below your means, start stockpiling up cash, and then mm -hmm. take the cash and do research on what's the best thing. What's yep. the best place to put my cash? Diversification means you don't actually have enough knowledge to know where to put your money. That's true. I've so just, just remember that. Just remember yeah. that. Diversification means you don't have enough knowledge of where to put your money, so you spread it out like a dumbass on a roulette table. If you knew it was going to hit seven, would you fucking put it on any other number? No. So when you're diversified, you're guessing. You're trying to be safe, so you're guessing. And it means you're uneducated. So whenever anybody tells you, make sure you're diversified. That means they're either broke or uneducated. Period, end of story. Only a very, very, very wealthy person who already made all their money from one fucking thing and then diversified it to preserve wealth, only they are correct. You diversify only when you want to preserve your wealth so you can't take a nuclear bomb to the fucking net worth on one thing. That's the only time you diversify is when you want to preserve your net worth. When I'm worth $500 million, I'll diversify um, because I'm like, okay, I think we're good guys. I think we're good. I'll put a hundred million on apartment buildings, a hundred million over here, a hundred million over here, 20 million over there, 50 million over there, 10 over there, 20 there. And I'll be like, I'm fucking diversified. Um, yeah. 
and we're good. But just remember that diversification is for preserving wealth or it's being told to you from an uneducated or unwealthy uh, person. And so as you're building up your, your, as you're living well below your means and you're stockpiling your cash, you really need to try to find one or two things that you massively believe in. So it would be AI companies and crypto companies. And for me, those are the two places I'm in venture capital. So I can get exposure to lots of AI companies. You don't even know of like right now I'm in the next Nvidia. Um, we're already, tw I'm already up 20 X on my investment. I'm through venture capital. I'm with a couple billionaires in their VC fund. Cause I networked and I sold myself into why they should let me in. I'm like, I'm going to be a billionaire guys. Don't you want me a future billionaire to be in your, you know, so, so I got in. Um, and so it's smart, right? Like, Hey, yeah. like, don't you want a guy who, you know, who's going to have all this net worth be like, Hey, I'm going to put, uh, you call me next time. I'll put 20 million in your fund. Cause I'm the fucking guy you, you got, you got me in your fund when I was relatively successful and now I'm ultra successful. Trust me. You want to have guys like that. Like I want to be able to call you when you're worth a hundred million and be like, Hey, I got a thing. You want to put 2 million in it? You see what I'm saying? So like yeah, you want to yeah. find, you, you need to build those relationships with, I know like you, bro, I know you're going to be successful, but there's levels, right? Like I have friends who are billionaires and I have friends who are worth 20 million, 20 million, very successful, but it ain't a billion. It would take 50 of those guys to equal that one guy. Yeah. Um, and so there's levels, but like, I want guys like you where I know you'll be successful in 10 years and I know where I'll be in 10 years relatively. And I'll yeah. be doing some big next level shit. And I'll be call you up and be like, Hey dude, I started my own fund. I got, I got my own fund, but I already made $375 million in the last 10 years with my own investments. And now everybody's like, Mark, where do you invest your capital? So I started my own fund and then my buddies can join that. It's like, so think about that too. Be, don't just be friends with people who are like, oh, they're already successful and made it. Cause like sometimes they're sleepers, bro. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, could... sometimes they're sleepers. A lot of my friends. Yeah. I've got a lot of friends who've like stayed the same, not, they haven't fallen off, but actually they have cause the cost of capital and the dollar's yeah. going down. So like to stay the same is slowly losing everything. Yeah. Um, what, so take all your cash and invest it into like one or two things. Yeah. What was the thing that opened your eyes and like opened the door to all this? Cause I mean, looking behind you, I see all the books. I know you, like you said, you probably consumed so much education, but was there like one person or book you read that kind of started this mm -hmm. kind of train? There's been, there's been a lot, there's been a lot. So I, I, I would hate to give the spotlight to one mentor, sure. um, but my, some of my top mentors, Tony Robbins on the personal development, be the best version of me. Everything can be improved, starting with myself first, um, constant and ever-ending improvement, self-mastery, like all that shit, like believe in myself, talk yeah. positively. Like Tony Robbins, boom. Jay Abraham, marketing, 360, think of everything. Like there is no box. Don't think out of the box. There is no box. Like think crazy, like unlimited amounts of ways. There is no right or wrong way to do a deal. And if you think you found the right way to do a deal, think again, there might be another way that's better. So like always thinking about different ways to structure a deal, structure an offer. Um, John Asaroff on mindset and even like marketing and sales, OG stuff. Yeah. Um, what about for just like this stuff on investments? So like the, for me, like, cause I'm asking this, I guess, context. Yeah, yeah. Me Michael, first. Michael Saylor, bro. Michael yeah. Saylor is the guy. He okay. lays out every single thing that you could do to put your money into from stocks, real estates to the 60, 40, right? Bullshit, baby boomer, like stocks and bonds. Um, yeah. and just lays it all out. Gold, precious metals, venture capital, private equity. He lays, just lays out every single place that you could put your money and how much money is in each one of those sectors. And then how like all of it's slowly flowing into Bitcoin. Yeah, um, yeah. and, and why Bitcoin will be a million dollars and it will be 5 million and it will be $10 million because it's the only thing that's fixed in the world. And so yeah. as the demand for that goes up, like I can literally have a billion dollars on a fucking thumb drive locked in the blockchain. And if only I remember my seed phrase, and I don't have it written down. There's no one in the world who can touch that billion dollars. You'd have to somehow suck it out of my head, which doesn't exist yet. Um, yeah. So Bitcoin's the only way in the world that a rich person can truly secure all their money without the custodian risk of the government being like, no, fuck Josh. He said something on Facebook we don't like. Lock his bank account down. By the way, they did that in Canada. Yeah. You said yeah. something they didn't like, they locked your bank account down. So um, yeah. they do that in China and they're going to do that in America depending on who gets elected. Um, oh, and the I'm curious because I've heard this argument or like this cause for argument for like the safety of the money, having control. And that was a big narrative from the initial, like, or the boom back around COVID or right after before. Um, and now we're kind of like this new bull run, you could say, or this new wave where it's coming up again. I'm not hearing that. For as crypto? A, yeah, for crypto specifically. Like, how much of like this, like Bitcoin, what you do is because of that safety stuff. And more so than just like, it's a great like asset to invest in. There is hype coming into it. You see longevity. Um, I would leave the money that I have in Bitcoin 
Mm -hmm. Um, right now I, I didn't say how much I have. I said how much I made in the last 12 months. Um, and I have a lot and I would leave all of it in there. Even if the number just stayed the same, I probably wouldn't be putting as much into it anymore. I'd find a different place to deploy capital. Um, the good news though, that's not the case. Bitcoin only ever goes up as you zoom out over a long period of time. Um, because it's a fixed, it's a, it's a fixed supply. I mean, there's only ever 21 million, but four and a four to five million are lost. And 1 million is in the original creator, whoever the fuck that is, doesn't matter, right? Like if, if people say, oh, that matters though. Okay, tell me who created the dollar that you use and live by and slave away to make. Tell me who made the dollar, you stupid fuck. You don't even know who made the dollar. You don't even know that the dollar is owned by the Federal Reserve, which is a family owned business. So when you think the government has the dollar, the government doesn't have the dollar. Go read The Creature from Jekyll Island and go read some more books and get educated on where money actually came from and who actually controls it. And you'll realize that it's a family who owns the printing press and is partnered with the government. And the government calls them and takes on debt. And then they print more money and they put more money into the, into the system. And yeah. as a result, what happens when there's too much of a good thing? Yeah. Too, much, too much water, you die. Too much air, we'll die. Um, too much money in the system. Yep. People people actually die. They kill themselves because they can't afford to live or they lost everything that they worked for and they kill themselves. Suicides are at an all-time high. It's just terrible. Like when you actually look at the stats, but yeah. who owns who owns the media and doesn't tell us this stuff? Who owns the pocket liners of the big tech companies, Facebook, and make sure that, oh, we can't spread that propaganda? Suspend their account for a couple of days. Um, give them the old slap on the wrist or just ban them indefinitely and say it was an AI bot. Um, yeah. And so, dude, it's just crazy the world that we live in. Yeah. Lack of trust amongst each other, all time high. Lack of trust amongst governments, all time high. Diversity amongst false fucking dividers. Oh, this side, that side. All made up just to get us to um, point fingers at each other instead of at them. Genius, bro. Absolute genius. Like if you read the books on how do you make people want to kill each other? Uh, like how do you make two people want to get divorced? Yeah. Or how, do you, how do you make two partners want to um, go to court? It's so easy. You make them fight each other over you, the real problem. You have to make them fight each other. And so it's so smart. You know, shake the, when you know, you know those old analogies, put two fucking uh, red ants in a box, shake them. They fight each other, even though you're the one shaking it. Um, yep. Put put two bees in a jar and shake them. They'll want to kill each other, but it's you're the one who's shaking it. So there's all these different things. So Yes, I'm invested heavily in Bitcoin because the number will go up forever um, and I'm willing to take the drawdowns like right now, te technically it's down from its all time high. Now I'm up tremendously from my dollar cost, you know, average principle, um, but I'm down from the all time high. And when it was up there, I had more millions. And now that it's down from there, I'm down a few million, but it's irrelevant. Um yeah because I'm holding for a very long period of time and I may never sell. I may just borrow against it when I decide now's the time. Um, yeah. And I do believe next year we'll be somewhere around 180 to two, uh, 250. So we're at $66,700 right now. This is the block clock tells me the time every one minute. Um, when you have that much money in it, bro, you want your fucking- Yeah, you know, you're checking. Um, I, I want it because I want to be able to look at you and look at the clock and be like, okay. Because like if that shit just suddenly dropped and we had like a da like a 10, 20% drop, like not only am I down millions of dollars, um, but I might be like one second and I buy more. Um, oh, I gotcha, yeah. Because yeah. it's inevitably going to go right back up. Um, yeah. And that's why like I was lucky when I sold my company, Bitcoin was at 24, 25 grand. So I dropped a lot on there and now we're at 66. So I'm still, you know, it's still like yeah, almost tripled. Yeah. Aside from Bitcoin, where are you investing your money? I know you, you mentioned your software company that you acquired 50% of. Uh -huh. Is that part of your play for moving on from like you started the internet marketing sales, all that stuff, you learned it, right? You transition over into yeah. other investments like Bitcoin. You're also acquiring a billion. I try to, I try to separate things that are requiring my time as an investment. Now okay. we could get, we could get into semantics and, 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 you know, meaning behind words. Um, yes, I am investing into my software company um, that I got, ha I acquired half of um, with my business partner. Um, but I don't look at that as an investment in the traditional sense by my definition of an investment. My definition of an investment is I put my money to work for me um, where yeah. this is just me putting money back for me to fucking work. So why, I don't, why, look, I don't why do that then. Like why you have the investments where you're not having to like work for your money. Yeah. Why is it because you're bored? You just need something to do. Uh, yeah. I was like semi-retired for like uh a while. I don't, I don't know exactly how to classify when I stopped. Um, I've yeah. definitely stopped now. Um, cause I have three companies. Um, but yeah, I mean, I probably took eight, eight or nine months off a combination of, I sold my company. Um, mm -hmm. my mom passed and I just was like 
super high, super low, and was like, fuck it. What's the point? Um, And so I just took off like eight months, maybe nine months. And then over the last like few months, I've like been, it's just so quick, right? Like once you have money, you have the network, you have the capital, you have the team. I'm just like, I'm, I'm here, baby. And it's just like, boom, like, you know, acquired half of a software company, um, have my publishing company still, and then launching a new biz up offer, which my business partner who already has launched the biggest, um, biz up offers in the entire industry has done multi, multi deca million dollar launches, um, 20 to $50 million launches all in a short period of time. Um, Mike, I'm going Can you say (laughs) which, like what biz up offer? The biz, yeah, the, the biggest one he did was in partnership with uh, Jason Fladlin um, okay. and Dan Hollings, and they did the crypto, the plan, and yeah. they did they did fifty seven million dollars in fourteen days. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it's the biggest biggest launch in internet history, and they did that off a hundred thousand leads. Uh, where Tony and Dean will have a million leads and do twenty million, they did fifty seven million on a hundred thousand leads, um, and it's compliant. So it's not like oh well, let's make money, so it can't be compliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's com- it's compliant. Um, compliant. And so they were locked up by now that much money. If you do some sketchy, right, right. And they've done, over, they've done over a hundred million dollars, um, in the last three years on that one offer. So there's not many people who can do that. So my business partner, Mike, who was behind that and he's behind the new offer. They have an AI offer as well. Again, crypto and AI, what the hell did I just say? Yeah. And guess what? Guess what? The only offers that they have crypto and AI, cause you want to go into the thing that's trendy, hot and sexy where the capital, the talent and the focus of everybody goes. Because that not only means that people are going there to invest. I want to buy your AI pro- program. Um, so consumers are going there because they're like, I'm going to get left behind. So they, well, they they go there for their attention, their time, their focus, and their money. Businesses go there because they say, shit, I need to learn this stuff too. Um, yeah. And so whether it's crypto or AI, you want to either invest your time and your operational elements of input output, right? I want to put my time into focusing on this. I'm going to make an, a new biz up offer I'm gonna, or I'm going to invest. So my brain always goes, I'm either going to start companies and partner with companies that are in the hot sectors while simultaneously putting my cash into them as well. And so one of the best ways to do that is uh, venture capital. So you don't have to have exposure. You don't have to do the research, the due diligence, the negotiations, all that. You just get into a venture capital fund. You put money in every quarter and then people who are way smarter and more connected than you. For me, it's Kamal and his brother, Naval Ravi Khan. Um, They're like the top guys in in VC. His brother, Naval, created Angel List. They're like the best. I'm in their fund. Um, And they go out and they invest in hundreds of companies with my money and the other people in the fund's money. And I just get to sit back and look at my dashboard and go, damn, I think I'm in the next Facebook, NVIDIA, Netflix. And these guys have a 35-year track record of being in all those companies. Um, And so I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm in at least one or two of the next big trillion, because now every company is a trillion dollar company, Jesus, um, inflation, right? Like before a yeah, hundred sure. billion dollars was crazy. Companies now are worth a hundred billion dollars. They have pre-revenue. What the fuck? How are you yeah. worth a hundred billion dollars? You ain't even make money. What are you valuing your company based on? Um, and so it's just crazy. We live in a wild world. There's so much money, more money is being printed, more money is being thrown at us, given to us, also taken from us. And so I just believe we do live in the most abundant time in the entire world. Yep. Um, but you just have to be prepared to know that like, if your only goal is making money, you're going to yep. be in trouble. You have to buy assets. Rich people have assets. Like I'm cash poor asset rich. You know what I mean? Like as soon as I get cash, I try to deploy it. Um, yeah. You know, I try to just immediately say, all right, it's going into Bitcoin. Now you, you asked if I'm diversified, I'm diversified in some areas. Like I'm yeah. in venture capital. So I can get exposure to all things tech without having to do the time and the energy of me finding and researching. It's a full-time job. That's why you put your money into a fund. And um, and then I spend almost all my time on the thing I put my time, my money into. So I put my money into venture capital, but I just told you, I, there's nothing for me to study. They do it all. And they I trust them to allocate my money. They're smarter than me, richer than me, more connected with me in venture capital. Go do it, boys. Um, but Bitcoin, I, I've spent well over 2,000 hours now. 2000 hours just studying Bitcoin and then the things around why the narrative and thesis of Bitcoin is the best. So global economy, macro, micro, I focus on like, what is money? What is hard money? Why is it so important that people can't fucking print more Bitcoin? Why is it important that there's not a CEO of Bitcoin who can just change things? Why is it important that there's a fixed supply of 21 million? Why is it important that it's decentralized and I can self-custody it and nobody can stop me from doing a transaction or leaving with my money if I say, I'm out of here. Um, you can't stop me and say, whoa, 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 shut down Wells Fargo or JP Morgan or where he has his money. Shut down Charles Schwab. Shut down Robin Hood. Shut down every place this guy has money on a custodian platform that we can just say, nope, Mark is considered a criminal because he said something we didn't like. 
because he's trying to leave the country. First of all, I'll just get on a private jet. Can't stop me there. Um, and second of all, I don't have much money in the bank compared to, right? Uh, I'm sure most people would die to have what I have in the bank, but versus Bitcoin, right? I'm cash poor um, and other assets as well. Um, and I have my house and I have some apartments and mobile homes um, and I have yeah. some stocks, mainly Bitcoin mining stocks, nuclear energy stocks, uranium stocks, some ETFs that are like in those industries, energy and uranium and um, nuclear power uh, ETFs and Bitcoin mining ETFs, little exposure to all of the industry, some gold and silver yeah. Uh, juniors because they could go up a lot more if gold and silver are going to go up. Um, it's not a doom and gloom thing. It's like I'm in yeah. energy. I'm in energy because I think you know once the world stops fucking around with all this green energy stuff, it's like you'll realize like nuclear energy is actually the best. Um, and so yeah, I can get into the whole thing, but it's like I'm invested in some of those areas. But even with that being said, eighty percent of my entire net worth is in Bitcoin, and nobody yeah. can nobody can do a fucking thing about it. Um, I got it on multi sig. If you put a gun to my head, I couldn't even give it to you because I've got multi-sig. So like it would require multiple people to be on video at the same time and sign off for it to get moved. Um, and so, cause that's yeah. what happens, bro. Like when you got that much yeah. money, you're like, yo, what yeah. if somebody just, and what if somebody tried to get me? You know what I mean? First of all, yeah. I have a, I have a CCW, so I'm strapped. Um, <laughs> like, just you know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. You roll up on yeah. your boy, I'm strapped. And you're not going to, and you're probably not going to see me printing, which means see my gun under my shirt. Um, cause I'll wear a, I'll wear a loose shirt or a flannel or something. So you won't see it. Um, but yeah, dude, you know, what do you, what do you say? And then as we kind of wrap this up, get, kind of go back to cool listeners who maybe are in that stage. So maybe they found that trendy company, they're building it up, they're making money from it, but they're looking their sites for the future. Kind of like me. Like, I feel like I found the areas from like, okay, got cash flow, Like, I know this business can give me the lifestyle where I'm chilling, I can enjoy it, but I'm like, I know I could do more. At what point, like how much cash do I need to be making profit a year? I would, I would immediately be taking, like the problem, this is the catch, right? Is at your age, you're like, I'm going to invest it all back into me because I'm the best bet. But yeah. the problem is, is the problem with that is, let's say you got uh 50 grand in the bank, right? Um, yeah. And I remember it's like, oh, you feel like you got a, you know, a 12 inch in your pants because you're like, I got 50 grand in the bank. I've never been richer. And you're like, no. Um, but then you get a, then you get a hundred grand in the bank and you're like, oh, I'm never going to not have a hundred grand in the bank. Right. Yeah. You're like, look, now that I, now that I see a hundred grand in the bank and my savings account, yeah. it's never going to get lower than that. I'm never fucking touching that money. And that's so stupid to leave a hundred grand just sitting in the bank because your ego, true. your ego and your pride. And then you get your first million dollars in your savings account. And you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to spend one dollar below that. Cause I don't want to see it go to 900. I want to see that second comma, right? Like I got to have that second comma there. Right. And, oh, I, and don't get me wrong. It's I'm getting my fucking 5% money market interest rate. So I'm making 50 grand on that. Like I'm a fucking idiot who knows nothing about money. Um, but this is what we do, right? We get that yeah. first 10 grand in the bank, that first 50, that first hundred, that first million. And you're like, I'm never going to go below that. Do you know how stupid it is to leave that much money just sitting in your bank? I'm curious. Cause I've you got to, you got to deploy it. You got to deploy yeah. the capital. You got to deploy the capital. There's an argument in my head when I hear stuff like that, where it's like, well, I don't need to make that. Why do I need to keep making more money? Like what number is enough? Like, do you think at some point everyone should have like, I'm money? there, bro. I think about it all the time. Sometimes I'll just like, play video games for the full day. And I'll be like, God, I played video games for the entire day today. Um, and then I'm like, Oh, but don't worry. I made $700,000 today. Cause Bitcoin went up half a fucking percent. Um, yeah. and so like, I trust me, bro, you want to be in a weird spot. I'm in a weird spot right now in my life. I've never been before. Um, yeah. Where I, I've invested into something. See, that's the difference, bro. You have a company. You have to show up. You have to operate. People could get sick. People, You could have a bad day. I don't have bad days. Even when Bitcoin goes down, I just buy more. Um, and so that's the difference is I'm invested in an asset that historically will only go up in a long enough time horizon. And I got the time, bro. I'm young and it's just going to keep going up. So and I, and I have operating companies that make me more money purely yeah. so I don't get bored. And because it's boring, bro. If you're, in, if you're retired at a young age, bro, all your friends are working still. So I tell people all the time, I'm like, yo, let's go do this. Let's go have some fun. Um, you know, during like work hours too, cause I've got to be a dad in the morning and a dad after. <laughs> um, but I'm like during nine to five work hours, I'm like, yo, yeah. let's go hit the gym. Let's go lay out by the pool. Let's go yeah. to the shooting range. Let's go fucking have fun. Let's play video games or whatever. Let's go do something fun. Um, and they're like, dude, I'm working. What are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, but you're successful too. And they're like, yeah, but I have to run my company. And I'm like, ah, shit. Yeah, that sucks. I have companies too, but I strategically am in a position now where like, 
I either put a lot of focus on it for 90 days and then guess what? It's got people and systems in place. So the whole thing, my new biz up offer, I said, I will not do a single fucking live webinar. That's what I said. Um, I, I've done hundreds and hun probably thousands yeah. of webinars yeah, uh, and made, made tens of millions of dollars. Thank the Lord. Um, yeah. very blessed and I'll never do another live webinar. Um, I just don't care. Um, unless it was, I, I shouldn't say that unless it was somebody got me like 10,000 or more registrants for a single yeah. live, a single live webinar. And I knew like 2,500 minimum, we're going to show up live. And I was like doing the numbers in my head. Okay. All right. I'm probably going to make like over half a million net just from this two hours. That's yeah. good. I'll make, I'll make half a million in two hours. Um, yeah. but not many people can get 10,000 on a webinar. So I'm like for everyone out there who can just get two or 3000 on the webinar and make me a hundred yeah. or 200 grand. Great. Run the replay, baby. Run the encore, run the pre-recorded, yeah. run the like live. And so like, companies are purely there so i can be i can do things i love i love this stuff bro um yeah. but i don't like the work and that's the tough part is you get to a point in your life where you're like i don't have to do the things i don't like to do except for go to the gym that's the one that's like non-negotiable for me um yeah. but like as soon as something like i don't want to do in business i'm just like what the fuck am i doing I'm like you know like in 30 days from now i'll probably make a million dollars from bitcoin going up um or my other things that i have that are passive um or my operation yeah. companies that once I put the time and energy and like my publishing companies, I put 90 days into them. They're up and running for years. Um, my new biz up offer, I'll put 90 days into it. It's going to be up and running um, for years. Um, and then I'm going to sell all of them, by the way. They all have exit plans built into them. That's yeah. the difference because I'm so strict on making sure that um, the product yeah. can do what it's supposed to do without me needing to be involved. And I hire other people. It used to be like, you're going to get coaching with Mark Lack for a week, every week, forever. And now I'm like, you're not going to get shit from Mark Lack. You're not going to get me at all. Um, Cause <laughs> like, yeah. and I, but I love it, dude. I love doing this stuff. I love talking to people, coaching people. But yeah. the problem is, it's just, it doesn't make sense financially for yeah. me to for me to do that because I know I'll make almost the same amount of money if it's automated. That's true. I guess you really help me see this in a new way just now because I think I used to look at it. It's like, okay, what kind of company do I need to build so I can have like the lifestyle? But then, okay, sure, I build a company, but I still have to run the company. See, and even you got even, into this is to get freedom, right? Right. The and then you just keep tying yourself into a bigger a bigger nut. Right. That's you have a big, you have a bigger team. You have more employees. You have more headache. You have more stress. It never ends. It never, it ends. never ends, bro. You just keep getting more fucked up. And that's the problem, bro. I see all my friends. They're out there. They got 40 employees. They make 30 million a year. And I'm like, God, dude, well, I would hit on camera who would like have to run like, oh they're... yeah. They, that's why I just, people are like, Mark, why haven't you started another podcast show? Cause I've done 2000 episodes. Like, why haven't you started another one? And I'm like, cause I, I know you have to commit for five years. That's the number five years to really get momentum and results and a track record and a brand that people go, fuck yeah, I'll come on that show. Um, and I have all the strategies to get the big guest year one, but like still, that doesn't mean I'm gonna get the algorithm in my favor year one. And I have to spend a bunch of money to invest in. And I I know exactly, I, I, I was making millions of dollars from a show every year and interviewing yeah. the biggest people and reaching hundreds of millions of people. God, I know the work that goes into it. I don't ever want to do it again, bro. In the time, the five-year time frame, I will have made over $100 million in Bitcoin doing nothing. Let me say that again, doing nothing. So why would I put five years into a show or anything when I know how long it takes, bro? I know it takes three to five years. Realistically, like you could say, oh, two, but like everything takes longer than you expect. Um, and heaven forbid you go into a negative recession cycle. Um, heaven forbid something bad in the economy happens. Heaven forbid there's another COVID variant, something. And it's just like, now granted, there's a huge lull and then like my business ripped, but like not everyone does. And then just because yeah. my business ripped doesn't mean that like maybe all the people I need to do this business with are. So again, there's so much risk in business. There's so much risk in, in starting and launching something. There's so much more time and money and stress that goes into doing something. And I know that's why I talk to most people. I'm like, well, what, why am I even doing any of this? Exactly. Buy Bitcoin and hold it. Um, but do things in the meantime that, you know, my Bitcoin is my, is my yeah. thing, bro. Like my Bitcoin is my thing. That's going to just continue to make me rich forever. But I had to get rich. I had to make millions of dollars like net liquid in the bank to put it in there. And then I had an exit where I was able to take a huge liquidity event and dump it in there. But I know people could say, oh, but I don't have the liquidity event. I'm not going to sell. I saved up. I lived below my means. I stocked up. I had that first 50 grand in the bank, 100 grand in the bank, 250 in the bank, million in the bank, 5 million in the bank. Like I've been there. That's why I can say it. I remember being so stupid and being like, 
oh, dude, I'm never going to have less than a million dollars in cash in my saving because it just feels good. And then it's like, wait a minute, wouldn't I rather have a million dollars in gold at SWP Caymans and the Cayman Islands as gold? So it's truly locked in the vault and safe than in cash, which goes down. Gold at least stays the same. Um, or wouldn't I rather put it into a real estate property that's going to double in five, 10 years? Wouldn't I rather put it in Bitcoin that's going to go up 10x in, in, in five years? Wouldn't I rather put it anywhere other than sitting in my account to give me a boner? Like, you know what I mean? Like who cares about the number in your bank when dollars are literally meant to go down in value if they're not deployed into something else that will go up as a productive unit in society? Bro, once you get that, you're going to be like, shit, I probably actually don't want to have any cash in the bank more than what I need. If I have income, then I want to have almost nothing in the bank if I know I've got income that's coming in. That's like, okay, my business cash flows me 50 grand a month after all expenses. So I, I owe tax on that 50, but I got 50 coming in. Yeah. So then I, and then I maybe only need like maybe 50 or hundred grand in the bank. So I've got like, if you're living expenses, which they should be, cause you're young, um, your living expenses should be 10 grand a month max and you're balling bro. And you're balling. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, you can, you're you know, fine. Yeah. yeah I, mine, mine's about a half a million a year. Um, yeah. only because I have a wife and like, um, and a kid, so. and, and, a, and a kid, the kid the kid's not that much. I mean, we'll go to like target and just buy everything that she wants, which is yeah. probably bad. Uh, I think she's too young to know that, know that she's being spoiled yet. I think she just thinks she's a princess. Um, and that that's the way things work as she points yeah. at it and she gets it. Um, if yeah. I had a boy, I probably wouldn't be doing that, but that's another conversation. It's a girl. So I'm like, ah, I'm going to treat you to be spoiled. And you know, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you know, like somebody could have taught my wife not to be spoiled and she wasn't, she grew up super humble, but now that she's married to me. And now when we, when she met me, I was dead broke. Um, but now that we have money, we worked hard for it. I'm like, baby, go, let's make it all happen for you. You know what I mean? Like awesome. I'm, I'm rare. I, I have whatever I want to, but I also have the discipline to be like, I'd rather have Bitcoin. Cause then I know when I have $200 million in the next five years, uh, I know that I'm going to be able to just point it at whatever I want and not have to even think about being smart. I'm going to be like, I did it. I did the discipline. I made the money. I invested it. I didn't immediately like a dumbass when I sold my company, just go and buy, like I already have three cars, right? Like I don't need four or five, six, and I don't need them to all be Lambos and Rolls Royces like an idiot. Um, because I just know that's stupid. Who am I trying to impress? Like I'm trying to impress my wife and my daughter and everyone else is like, give me a high five, make me feel good. But like, I don't actually give a shit what you think. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you get to that stage and you're like, I don't know if it's, it's a combination of when you never need anybody ever again, that's when you get to the point. And that's a dollar amount. Um, when you get to a certain dollar amount, it could be over 10 or 20 million for, for different people, but that's when you never need another person to text you back or call you back or partner with you or yeah. do anything. Um, you know, like there's just not like you could ruin my whole reputation. If I somehow did something bad, like it wouldn't matter, dude. Like, that's like true. ruin my reputation. Oh, I can't come back in the industry. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, my, okay. my core people are still going to be with me and who cares? I don't need to make money ever again from a job or a business or an opportunity or a person ever. Um, and even the government can't fuck with me unless they threw me in prison, but then my family would have my Bitcoin and they'd be signed. But you get my point. Like you gotta, yes. yeah. you gotta get to that, get to that level, but dude, make your money in your business and start I'd say buy Bitcoin, not financial advice, but definitely do it. Um, yeah. listen, listen to Michael Saylor. I can send you a bunch of literature and videos and podcasts and presentations from him. Um, but you'll, you'll start to realize as you go down the journey, right? Like the problem is, and the reason why I'm so passionate about this now is because I, I know already it's not fun being the richest person in your neighborhood. Um, it's not fun being the richest person in your family. It's not fun being the richest person in your friend group. And by the way, I'm not, I'm just saying that because I'm starting to get a tiny taste of it. And, um, I want everyone around me to be winning and to be successful. Um, it's almost like it's really good on a team when you win, cause everyone yeah. feels like they won, but in tennis, you won by yourself. Yeah. And I, I just know for a fact, I played a lot of sports growing up. I know for a fact, and I like tennis. Um, I know for a fact, it doesn't feel as good to win a tennis match by yourself than it does to win the Super Bowl with your team or a basketball the championship with your boys because yeah. then you all get to be there and then you get a vibe for like the high for like weeks or months from that high yeah. you know we fucking did it boy like you get to be with your boys and you get to be like we did it and like that feeling like i got goosebumps even remembering that back in my days yeah. winning winning with the boys and so like winning a tennis match by yourself no it's not nearly mm -hmm. as good because nobody wants to nobody will celebrate that the same as you because yeah, you yeah. won you only won. you won but when we won it's a different feeling. Even go home to your wife. She's like, good job. But like the next day, she's like, change the fucking diaper. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you're like, you're like, 
Um, like I just won the fucking Wimbledon. Like I gotta change the diaper the next day. Yeah, because you, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. just you won, sweetie. Yeah. Even though we won as a family, like I'm not on the team with you. I didn't train with you, so the win is different. So that's why I'm saying is like I try to I preach this stuff because like I've started businesses, I've run businesses, I've exited yeah. businesses. I'm still doing it. Um, after a little micro retirement, because that's what you should do. You shouldn't retire forever. You should just take like micro retirements when you had some yep. big wins, highs or lows. Take a little time off, cool it, refuel the jets. And then get back in the game. And that's how it is, right? Like, I'm sure I'll, I'm going to, I told my wife, I was, I'm going to pump for another like three to five years. I'm going to make another hundred million. And then I'm going to probably go into another micro retirement phase and then find the next thing, get back in, pump it for three to five years, maybe 10 if it needs it. Right. But like, I think more capital, more things, more stuff I should be able to. And with technology and AI, I should be able to shorten like what took 10 should be done in three to five. So I think. Um, you should have every three to five years on the short end, 10 on the high end, a grand slam. I started my business exactly 10 years ago and I exited on the 10th year. Boom. And then I invested it uh, into Bitcoin while dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. And over the next 10 years, I know for absolute guaranteed certainty, that's what's going to make me a, cen uh, a centa or a multi-centa millionaire. By the way, I'm only talking about in Bitcoin. I'll have 100, 200, 300 million dollars in US denominated value in Bitcoin. Um, so if I wanted to click sell, I'd have all that in cash um, while doing all my other shit. Um, my software company um, and my publishing company and my uh, biz op offer. By the way, all of those are already set up to be sold. Like I already yeah. have talked to buyers. I asked them, what are you looking for? Is it more EBITDA based? Is it more MR? Is it more monthly recurring revenue based? And then they yeah. tell me, and then I go and fucking make it. Do you see this, bro? It's like asking somebody who wants to buy a house what house do you want? And then I have to put the time and the energy and the team and the capital into building the house. But the person told me they're going to buy it. And if they don't, I know there's other buyers out there like them, but that's yeah. what buyers want. So I make my biz op offer, have high EBITDA and monthly recurring, which I've never done before. And this in the same way that I'm doing now, I make my other published offer have that as well. And then I make my software company have that as well. And so I'm literally going out already and just asking, because this is what you do, bro. You ask a real estate investor, what type of property do they want to buy? Because you know what real estate investors are always doing? Looking for the next deal. You yeah. know what people who buy companies are doing? Looking for the next company. You know what venture capital people are doing? They're always looking for the next company. You know what private equity is doing? They're always looking for the next company. So you tell them, hey, guess what? And you know who the really good ones are? They don't go away in five years. So if it takes you five years to build it and you stay in touch with them and you tell them along the way, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's where we're at. Let me know. Are we getting close? Are we on track? Is the, I know you said this. Have things changed for you guys? Cost of capital? Are you guys shifting? Are you not wanting to do AI or SaaS or biz op or coaching or courses? Like, so I know if I should move on and start nurturing that relationship with a future buyer. So I'm building in the exit from the inception of you and me whiteboarding out the fucking offer. That's just it. Find me another person in this industry who does that, bro. Yeah. Nobody. And that's one of the reasons why. And then I take the cash and I deploy it into um, tech and Bitcoin and things that are going to radically go up. So I, I feel like I've escaped the matrix and I have an unfair advantage over everybody else because I'm doing these subtle differences that I never ever hear anybody in the industry talking about no that is the next level where you talk about oh there's all these super smart people out there how to make the offer better change the headline do this do this, do this. all the little fucking widgets and those people don't have you know i don't want to get into it. those people don't have <laughs> that'll be for episode two <laughs> yeah, those, those people don't have the you know they're not they're, they don't they don't have the net worth or they're not going to have the net worth where they should be like when you have when you have the skill you have the talent what i've realized bro is the gap between being super fucking rich and wealthy which is like to me it's over 100 million dollars plus um over 100 million dollars plus almost nobody in this entire industry has the online education marketing make money sell courses even software companies bro like very few people in the online education software, like very few people do. Um, that's yeah. why Sam Evans is going for his grand slam with school. He's going for that, you know, yeah. um, Hermosi, Hermosi went from internet marketer. Like if you look at all yeah. the big dogs, right? Like what if, what have they done? I say, we, what have we done? Right. It's like stopped being an internet marketer. First of all, <laughs> um, I made my, I, I made my millions doing that. And then I went wham and I shifted into doing something that really matters. Not on an impact basis, but on a private equity venture capital, who's going to buy me for a bunch of money basis and what, where can I get the largest multiple? Yeah. You make that. And then the next level is once I get that capital, I have to deploy it strategically because otherwise I could just 
be stupid and put it into real estate and double my money every five to 10 years in today's economy versus Bitcoin in five to 10 years. Or um, here's an example. Had you put a million dollars on NVIDIA 10 years ago, just real quick, what number, how much would you make? 10 years ago, had you put a million dollars on NVIDIA 10 years ago, how much would you have today? $250 million. Do you know how fucking hard you'd have to work in 10 years to make $250 million? You'd have it liquid, just sitting in your account. Liquid. $1 million. You didn't have to do anything. And you made $250 million. That means you made $25 million every single year doing nothing. Bro, tell me you don't want that. That is the goal. Oh, I figured internet marketing. Oh, I made millions. Okay, did that. But like now, how do I exit so I can get three or four or five years of cash today so I can literally reach all the way into 2028. I can grab all that fucking cash all the way into 2028, 2027, 2026, 2025. And I can pull it into my fucking bank account today. I reached all the way to the future, pulled four or five years of cash. I got it wired in my account today. Someone else has the headache of having to go and recoup that now. And then I take that and I invest it on NVIDIA or Bitcoin and something that's going to go up and make me literally rip your fucking face off money doing nothing in 10 years. And that's why I know I'm in those things and I don't have a million. I don't have five million and I don't even have 10 million. I have more than that invested in all these fucking things. So I know in 10 years, I will have hundreds of millions of dollars or a billion dollars um, and I'll be in my early 40s. Um, and everyone else in this industry will have either turned down their exit, <laughs> like Russell Brunson, um, who lost a billion dollar exit, um, or, oh. or, um, or cause they get greedy and ego and they think, oh, oh. no, we're going up. Somebody offers us a billion now. Imagine what they'll offer us next year. How about less? Um, and so take the exit when you can get it. Um, even if you have to sell for less than what the market's going for because of the cost of capital, interest rates, the economy, whatever. Yep. Take the money because the reason you don't do it is because you think you're going to keep operating the company. You're going to get a better offer. You're not. You take the money. You reach two, three, four, five, six years in the future. Grab all that cash. Say, good luck. Yeah. Take it and you invest it in something. So then in those two, three, four, five years that you would have had to work just to get the fucking money you got today in that three, four, five, six, seven years, you became a billionaire because you took that money and you put it on the thing. And the thing did the work for you while you went and started some new thing. And the new thing is the way you're making money while the money you got in the future, you put it into this and that went and 10, 100 extra fucking net worth without you having to work while you started over and made new things that are not competitive to the thing that you probably signed a contract that says non-compete. And so, boom, do you get the, this is the matrix game that I'm playing now and I'm so excited about and I want other people to do it too because that's how you get so rich, bro. That's how like, that's just, that's it. Like, and I've, I've heard it, I pulled from a bunch of different people to figure it like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't come up with this. This is what yeah. rich, this is what really rich entrepreneurial people do. And then yeah, we'll you get it. to that level where like, you know, you're just buying companies and like, like, I said, like I'll rarely ever start a company over. And here's the other thing too. Now, every single thing I'm doing, I've reached out and for you, by the way, publishing company, I'm going to bring it back to you. Publishing company. What I do is I find agencies and I've narrowed it down now to just like my boy, Mike Bamaseda and his, his agency amplify, but it was before it was a couple agencies and you can do the same thing. So now when I am publishing somebody, I go to like, doing... I'm not even doing anything. bro. I, I have, I have, I have a That's... bookkeeping. I have a bookkeeping and an accounting firm yeah. outsourced. Yeah. I have, yeah. I have multiple law firms outsourced. Well, like, I, you don't have a fucking lawyer on your salary. Are you kidding me? You have a law firm and you pay them when you need them. You have a, bookkeeping and um, accounting firm that's amazing. And you don't have to trust one guy who could fuck you. They're a big company. So you know, a big billion dollar company is not going to fuck you yeah. because then it's this whole thing. But one dude in Mississippi who did your friend's taxes, that guy can fuck you. So you don't want one guy or girl, you want a big company. So you want to outsource to a big company to do your bookkeeping and publishing. And most people have that one guy in Mississippi and then he fucks him at some point when they see that he's making enough money or he's siphoning some stuff out. That's how you get in trouble. You rarely are going to get in trouble because you got this big billion dollar company with all this hierarchy and management and like everything they do on their computer with your stuff's tracked and recorded. So like, they're not going to fuck you. And if they do, it's probably going to be a big insurance policy backing it to cover you and make sure your debt's paid. But Mississippi guy, you're going to have to sue him and take him to court. Totally different. 
So you outsource the accounting, you outsource the bookkeeping, you outsource the customer support is outsourced and you can incorporate AI. You outsource the legal, you even outsource all the work, the sales, the marketing, the copywriting, the brand design, the video editing by finding an agency that already does it. <laughs> Well, and, like, and, yeah, it makes sense, dude. And then I go to the agency and I say, if I were to bring you a client, how much would you pay me? And they say, oh, 10 or 20%. Yeah. 10 or 20%. And you know how much the actual owner of big agencies makes is about 20%. Yeah. So I'm already making the same amount as the owner of the company yeah, who has to hire, sure. train, manage, and I'll get 10 or 20%. And here's the thing, I always get 20% because I just say, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get you a celebrity or a thought leader or an expert. And I'm going to bring them to you. I'm going to negotiate the deal. I'm going to be sitting there all the way saying, saying by the way, I'm going to say it's us. So is that cool? Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. say it's us. It's our company. I'm going to say our company does this. Our company does this. And um, now I'm able to go out and I'm able to go and get whoever I want, thought leader, expert, whatever. And because I'm so good at framing it and selling it and positioning it and tying that person into an exit, I even tell these people that we published, there'll be an exit built in. And I'll say, well, build the exit in from the beginning. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to go with you because the other fuck boy was like, oh, charge, charge me $15,000 a month. You're going to charge me nothing and take a percentage and build in an exit. Great. Oh, and most agencies, they'll just charge you money and build your offer. It won't be compliant. They won't do your bookkeeping, accounting and legal and everything. I will. Oh, you're not going with anybody but me. <laughs> and then I get the, and then I get the deal, the contract signed and then everybody else goes to work for me. <laughs> what the frick? I'm already trying to like build my team. and then and then I just get my distributions and I can go and bring in the next person and the next person and the next person and that is one of my companies a publishing company and I do that and then I have my biz up offer where I'll put 90 days in mapping out the offer thinking through it like I have a meeting every single week I'm sorry yeah. every single day for 90 days one hour a day every single day for 90 days and then within that 90 days the offer was created, incepted, built in the exit, everything structured, the, the copy, the branding, the funnels, the templates, the SaaS, the company, the banking, the accounting, the customer support, the legal, everything's done. Check, check, check. It could take four months sometimes, usually 90 days. And it's done, bro. And now I never have to work again. It's just pure cash. And then the work that I do is me reaching out to people saying, hey, promote this. Hey, buy this. Hey, work with us. So bro, this is the level that you need to be thinking at. Most people are like walking around big dick because they have their own company. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I feel so bad for you that you have to run a company, hire people, train people, fire people, manage people, compliance risk, legal risk, all this stuff. And um, you can't go to another company because you're so fucking strapped down and rooted into your company because you built it that way. Because that's how you thought you're supposed to do it. Um, I can I can go and have a bunch of companies and they're all going to have exits and I'll sell them below market value. Just like if my house is worth 2.5, how fast do you think I'd sell it at 2.3? Yeah. Like today, somebody in cash, my neighbor is a realtor. She's always telling me what my house is worth because she's like, if you ever want to sell me. She, <laughs> so my realtor is the one who's always telling me. She goes, someone down the street just over 2.49. And I'm like, shit, okay. Um, I don't care, but thanks. Um, and so, yeah, dude, it's just like, Awesome. How you sell the company for less than its market value, you're going to go super quick. And I don't care because I'm getting two or three or four years of cash up front to do the thing that I told you. Now that I have this recipe and this formula and I've done it and I'm doing it, it's just unstoppable. And you'll literally see that's how you go from this industry and taking the same skills that you learned here and sharpening your sword. And you can jump up to the stratosphere of like, uh, send a millionaire, $100 million net worth and do it within 10 years. But the big missing part is, you can't just build them and sell them and then get the cash. You have to invest the cash. Yeah. And that's the missing part for some people is yeah. they have the cash and then they go and they buy another house in the mansion to look cool. Like, bro, trust me, I'm going to get the mansion, but I'm delaying another five or 10 years so that yeah. my giant multi deca millions can go to multi centa millions. And then when I go buy the stupid 10 or $20 million house and everybody goes, what the fuck? Is that really your house? And they all, nobody thinks that it's really my house until five years later, they see that I'm still there. And they're like, Jesus, I think that's really his house. Um, same thing happened to this house. And this house isn't even crazy. I remember, but I was, I was 27 at the time. Now I'm 34. And everybody yeah. was like, there's no way a 27 year old really lives in that house. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, it's been seven years. I'm still here. Um, and so it'd be the same thing, right? But the next house yeah. will be truly the like, 
Whoa. And it'll be like discipline, bro. I can go buy that house right now. But then all my freaking nut is in the house, the $20 million house, right? It's like, what an idiot. And, you, and to pay cash would literally be the dumbest thing ever. But that's what people do. They have an exit or they do the thing. And then they go to buy the boat, they buy the house, they buy all the things. And now they have these depreciating liabilities. And it's like, God, what a, what a bad allocation. Just wait and be disciplined for five or 10 years. 10x your net worth and then you can go buy the thing for so cheap or take a loan against your assets like this is yeah. the game i want you to play bro and i want i want yeah. to see that become the next pivot for you like publishing yeah. offers is cute and it's nice and like doing that but it's like there's layer there's levels oh uh, yeah and i'm just thinking because like i already have put together certain pieces i'm assembling like assembling different pieces but it makes sense or it's like yeah. okay i can get the connections i can sell the, sell the marketing like you're saying you know so, the people yeah you know the people and then you, you could do this. Bro, and then guess what? You'll still make the same 20% that you would have yeah, had you. Managing, freaking exactly. team, hiring, yes. vision, culture. And then I got to, sorry, honey, I got to yes. be on calls with the team. Right. Because it's you know, all on you. You know, And you know what? what's crazy? Because you did it that way. You chose to structure it that way. Because some other freaking guru or some guy. Is so that's what you do. You start your company. And then you freaking, you just do it. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think I'm the most successful guy in the industry who has the most time in the industry. That's the distinction. There might be people who are more successful. They're, <laughs> they're, they're on a fucking plane. They're on a fucking plane. They're on a, they're at a company talking yeah. to their employees, doing trainings, doing meetups, doing all that shit. They might have a little bit more money than me. I'll, I'll pass them in the next five to 10 years just yeah. from Bitcoin. Um, but like, bro, I'm, yeah, there's like a guy was, more time. Was, That's the benefit. Like time. Like I, I know, right? I lost my mom. Um, time is all that matters, bro. Like yeah. all the money stuff's bullshit. You want time with your loved ones. For yeah. me, that's the biggest thing. Like I have, I, I used to have this thing that was like, if I'm not working, I'm a piece of shit. And it was like, now I'm like, no, I'm not working. Yeah, no, yeah. if I'm not working, I'm winning. You guys yeah. are all stuck at your fucking computers working on an offer that, like, if you or your family member got super sick, that offer wouldn't mean shit. But the problem is, is you've set yourself up where you have to do that to make the money to then supposedly have the time to be with your sick loved one. You can't turn it off because you built it to not turn off. That's crazy. If you step back, you get fucked. Everything goes down. And so you want to already build it to not need you. And it only takes three to six months if you do it from the beginning. But if you build it where it needs you, then yeah. all your people and systems rely on you. So you have to build it from the beginning where how do how does it not need me right after this meeting? How does it not need me right when we launch? How does it not need me right when I'm done filming this fucking video? How does it not need me right when it publishes? That's what you want to ask yourself. And how do I put all these people in place to work for me and not have to charge the client up front? Like, bro, as you start to ask yourself those questions, right? how could you go, how could you be published by anybody but me after hearing that? That's great. Well, uh, Mark, speaking of friend, family and friends, I think it's time we yeah, bro. do that. Um, it's been overdue. It's been it's been years. It's been deep. years. But, I, but I'm excited because, la like I said, last time we met, you told me things. I didn't, some, I didn't go out there, okay, I'm going to do exactly what Mark said. I ended up doing it subconsciously and was right. fine. So I'm excited for this. This is it, bro. It's the pivot. Sometimes that's all it takes, bro. That's the thing. Like yeah. I've come to realize like, yeah, there's like, a, a, there's probably at least 50 tactics we could talk about that would make people, and we could do it on yeah. another one if you want. Um, and yeah. it would make, it would make, it would double and triple everyone's conversions and, and, and be like, uh, your boy, Alan, um, yeah. um, like give people the best little things they could do to increase their conversion rate and their show up rate and, and their upsell rate and their LTV or AOV or, you know, uh, cool, bro. I know all that stuff too, but like, what a silly game to play. You know what I mean? Like without the rest. So I want to see yeah. you make those, I want to see you make those power moves, dude. And then happy to do another one of these and give you the update. Yeah. But this is why That's I've been good. so quiet on social media too. Yeah, just like, a ghost, I like, what is he I've, doing? I've been a ghost, bro. Cause I, cause I know it's all pointless dude. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. It's like, and I'm it's hard to, that. it's hard to convey this in a little two minute video or whatever. Yeah. It's like, so anybody who watches all the way through, hopefully they get that like next level, like, Oh, oh yeah. shit. Okay. There's different ways to unlock new levels of the game and make a bunch of money without having to work and yeah. make the same as if I was working. It's crazy, bro. So I want to see you do it. I want to see you make those moves. And then uh, let me know when this is published so I can share it with people. And uh, oh. Hey, maybe yeah, someday we'll do a, a, just on like publishing and how you're able to do that deal structure, not doing the work. Maybe we'll put together 
yeah, something yeah. on that. Would be Bro, sweet. see, that's an offer right there. That's a low ticket offer. We can, know, we, we, we can do it. We... Hey, Mark, I'll publish you, man. I got to send you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, well, I appreciate you jumping on, dude. We'll talk later. Uh, everyone who's watching this, make sure to check out Mark Black. I appreciate your time, dude. And thank you for helping. Was this me. live on Facebook? No, dude, we were just recording. So I'm going to cut it off. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, we're live right now. No, dude. I, I... <laughs> well, yeah, I'll post it, but I appreciate you, dude, and we'll talk yeah. later. See you, bro. Right. Bye.